Hello guys, welcome back to the channel, welcome back to the garage. So, as we had stated previously in another video, um, the cage is completely done. Well, since that last video, the seat mount bracket is done. All we need to do is put our tabs on there once we figure out exactly where the kirky is going to go. And then weld our uh, seat belt bar in there for our five point harness. Other than that, everything is done. It's fully welded. Um, even have a little cap on the end here and a couple little mounts on either side for the body itself. So we have two mounts in the back, two fabricated up front here, as you can see right there, and then the factory ones all the way up front. So like I said before, the cage is done. Um, I just wanted to do a little video and kind of go over how I went about doing this. Um, I know through the subsequent videos, you probably, you guys probably have the gist, but I just want to give you kind of the exact little uh, tools and programs and tips that I kind of picked up along the way of how to build this 25-6 cage. Now, it is not a true 25-6 cage um, because we are missing the X brace. So before we dive into what a 25-6 is and all the tools and all, and all that, I just want to give a shout out to my buddies Hunter and Grayson um, from down the hunting camp. It was good seeing you guys this weekend. Can't wait to see you guys during hunting season. So anyway, now that that's out of the way, what is a 25-6 cage? So like I said, this is basically a 25-6 cage. We are just missing an X brace that will go in the center here. We're going to do that after we kind of get rid of this factory floor, probably this winter. Um, what is 25-6 cert? Um, it's an SFI cert cage. What that allows you to do is get down to a 799 and a quarter mile with something that is under 5,000 pounds or 5,000 pounds and under. So basically, that's probably the fastest cert you can get with a you know like a full frame truck. Um, it's the kind of cage that like the old fire pump truck had, the old industrial uh, injection Duramax had, so on and so forth. So like I said, this is a 25-6 cert cage. Um, here is the SFI book for it. So if you want to build this cage, you, you need to pick this up. It has all of your outlines, all of your um, rules. Really, you got to read through the whole thing. Um, and then once you get to putting bars in it, it has all the bars listed, what the material is, and then it has what notes you need to go see throughout the rules section uh, in order to cross-reference, cross make sure you got everything right. And then also they have these handy-dandy diagrams um, that kind of show you the basic gist. Uh, your cage does not have to be... This is not the picture of your cage. This is just a general overview of what it looks like. Everybody's is going to be a little different. Like this blue bar right here, it can actually go the opposite way. Um, but that's all stipulated in the rules. Um, some of our stuff, like these bent bars over here, are actually um, inch and 5 eighths, 083 wall, because that's what our bender is for. Uh, so anyway, that's kind of the whole uh, cage book. If you're only doing like an 850 cage, definitely go pick up an MHRA uh, official rule book. They're, as you can see, like $10. That'll help you in building your 850 cage. So I said all of our bends are inch and five eighths, um, and that is because that's what our bender is set up for. So we have this nice Pro Tools manual bender. This was perfect for what we were doing here. Um, really, there's not a ton of bends involved. Uh, of course, we got one here and some kicks all over the place, but your window slash door bar here or um, roof bar slash windshield bar here, your main hoop, of course, our funny car cage. Those are our only real bends. So that's why I went with the inch and five eighths. Um, the reason I only have inch and five eighths is the bender itself is say $300. Well, this shoe and die, they're also about $300. So I decided just to get the one. Um, yeah, we have to use a little bit more of the same tubing, but no big deal. This is definitely a, uh, very usable bender for doing this. Obviously, if you're gonna be doing more than just one cage, you're gonna want something not as manual. Um, you can actually buy um, kits on like eBay where you can convert these over to hydraulics, so that's something else you can look at. But this, and from what I've seen, the 
Um, JD squared bender are pretty much the same. This thing has a couple parts I think are a little thicker. That's why I went with that. So that's how we made our bends on our tube. Um, next thing is how do we make our cuts on our tube? So um, at the end of this, um, the last portion of this, probably the meat and potatoes of this, is gonna be me showing you guys the Bentec software that I used, um, which allows you to make these cutting wrappers. And this is a cutting wrapper. Basically, it has all of your dimensions and all that, um, where to set your hole saw, where to put the um, cutout. You cut this off the paper, put it on your tube, and it'll make your exact um, fit for however it is you're uh, going to your matched tubes. Um, when I first started doing this, I went with this Harbor Freight uh, tubing notcher. Does it work? Yes. Was I happy with the notches? No, they always seem to be a little off center. Um, I did do some things to fix it, make it a little better, but I still wasn't happy with it. Basically, I used the Bentec, um, man, I just forgot the word. All right, <laughs> got my train of thought back. I used my Bentec cutting wrappers to do that with a grinder and a um, flap disc, and that made all of our cuts um, where we needed them. Would it? Would a real hole saw um, and tubing notch have been better? Yes, if this is something you're gonna do, definitely invest in a good one of those rather than that cheap Harbor Freight one. Like I said, I ended up doing everything with a grinder. So then, as you guys can imagine, um, we went and used our chop saw, miscellaneous clamps all over the place. We had miscellaneous magnets and angle finders. Um, squares, levels, um, and then on to the welding stuff. So this being a fully chromoly cage, we had to, which allows us to have a thinner wall, um, so thus lighter tubing to achieve the same thing. But the downside is it has to be TIG welded. It cannot be MIG welded, um, which is very time consuming. I'm not gonna get into TIG welding, um, if you guys want to check something out about that, there's a lot of guys on YouTube who are very knowledgeable, like uh, Jody at WeldingTipsAndTricks.com, the Fab Forms, um, different places like that. If you want to learn how to take weld, there's definitely enough information on YouTube. You can check out some videos and figure out how to do it. So basically what I was using was this little Miller um, welder. It's a stick slash TIG welder. Fantastic. Um, the only problem I had with it was I found... Uh, towards the end of the cage build that the gas um, because the gas it's a scratch start and as soon as you would scratch it you'd have argon at your um, torch but the argon would stay on much longer than it needed to and I couldn't figure out why I mean there's even a few times when I had to shut the machine off in order to get it to stop so just something to be mindful with this uh, little Miller welder um, also talking about the welder uh, definitely love my speed glass uh, I definitely love my speed glass speed shield. They're light, they work well, they're phenomenal. I like this particular model myself. They make one that's got like a little bigger head on it. I have one of those at work and I don't really care for it. Um, talking about our torch and all that, I had a TIG finger that I used that really helped out, you know, when you were doing some of these welds because the tube would get hot. And another thing, as far as the TIG torch goes, I kind of thought it was a gimmick when I saw it on like Instagram and all, but these Furic cups, if my camera will uh, focus. So this is a FUPA 12. This is the first cup that I got. Basically, it is a gas lens um, that is phenomenal. It allows you to really put a lot of stick out. Um, I just have our tungsten in there uh, just a little bit for storage, but you can really stick that thing out. I use the FUPA 12 for most of this, um, but I got a BBW after I kind of realized that I like this so much. So this is a BBW, this is kind of the big hoss of the group, and you can really just put that, you can hang that tungsten way out there. And these big cups is what allows you to get into these tight areas, do uh, these joints like right here, so these Furic cups definitely help. Um, I would recommend getting one. Get one, try it if you like it, get some extra screens, get an extra cup. Also, um, 
they make glass ones of these. You'll see them on Instagram and stuff like that all the time. They look cool. I had one for about a night and just with how I work, I'm a little, well, you guys know how I am, but a uh, little all over the place, I guess. And I smash that thing, just one hit on the ground. So I choose to just have a ceramic cup. Um, they definitely hold up a lot better. Anybody who has TIG welded, typically a ceramic cup's what you use anyway. Um, though the glass is nice for you know being able to see your weld completely and stuff like that. So that's kind of my TIG welding stuff. Um, another thing, with all the weird positions and places you needed to be to do this cage, this is something that came in handy um, phenomenally. This is a tungsten grinder. Uh, you can get these from a lot of different places, but you can just shove your tungsten in there, grind it down, get your angle. You can adjust it all around. Definitely well worth the money to have one of these things. So like I said, you know, that's kind of the tools I use. Nothing really special. There's a couple little uh, trick things there that really helped me out that I learned along the way and I didn't really know to begin with. Uh, but yeah, really the hardest part of the whole cage thing, um, if you know how to weld and stuff like that, is kind of the design and figuring out exactly how you're gonna do this. So when I say that, as you guys can see how intricate it is, obviously you gotta figure out, you know, when do I weld it to the frame? What bars to do when? Because you can weld some of this stuff in there and then not be able to weld other stuff or make it more difficult for you to weld certain other things. So as far as design goes, it's also it's designing where the bar, bars go, where everything needs to be, but also when to weld stuff, when to tack stuff, when to cut stuff back out. That's really the major hurdle with this thing. That is a time consuming thing. Um, that's kind of why videos got pushed to the side because there was nights when I would come out here and just kind of stare at everything because it was just what what do I do next what's the right move all that kind of stuff so that's kind of the tools I used that's how we built our cage now the other tool and I talked about it earlier is Bentec. Bentec is a software for doing stuff like this um, if you wanted to build a rock buggy or something like that that's what you'd use so we'll go in the house now hop on my laptop and I will show you how this cage came to life digitally. So guys, this is the Bentec software. This is the software I use to make all my bends, almost all my cuts. Pretty much everything is on here other than um, some of the gussets that we made and little stuff like that. So as you can see, here is our actual cage, which we will go into here in a second. Um, but you can do a lot of different things. You can make custom parts, all kinds of stuff. As you can see, there is some stuff that is not highlighted here. That's all stuff that can be added later if you want to make headers, exhaust, sheet metal stuff. A um, little bit more in-depth stuff. So you can go to a point where you can make um, a full setup or you can make individual parts. As you can see here, they have a bunch of um, templates. So basically you... Uh, pick a template that looks like the part that you want, insert your dimensions over here, and it will make your part um, exactly how you want. And this is actually how I went about making main hoop um, for our cage. So we'll go past that. I'm not kinda, I'm not gonna kinda show you guys how to do this. Um, Bentec actually has like a whole wiki um, website that will show you stuff. But as you can see, here is our cage. Here's every bar on the cage. Everything is color-coded. Um, you can spin this thing kind of however you want. And you can even go to home and put it back to where it was. You can also go to display and just see like a wireframe diagram. Here's all of what our, we call our pick points. So what a pick point is, is where you put different points on this. It can be a little confusing when you start but once you get the hang of it, it's relatively easy to use. Um, so like I said, I use this for all of our bends, all of our cuts, all of our stuff like that. So if we go to parts, if we go to main hoop here, go to uh, part details, there's our main hoop. Here's how we made it. Um, as you can see, it's inch and five eighths chromoly. Our die is a six inch bend. 
um, four inch and five eighths. So part details, you can go to bend order and it'll actually show you how to bend the part. It also has all of your bends, where you locate it on the tube. You mark the tube before you bend anything. Um, your angle you bend it to and so on and so forth. It also gives you your cut length and what this part will weigh when it's all said and done, which our main hoop is roughly 19 pounds. But you can even go to bend order and that will show you how to bend it on your bender so oh. so as you can see you just hit play and it'll show you each and every bend i have this slowed down to watch it you can make it whatever speed you want this thing is very very customizable you pretty much put in all the information how you want it um, a lot of your common benders like our Pro Tools bender or the JD Squared bender are already in the software. So it really cuts down on your setup time. So if we go up to tools here, we'll see we have our tube library. So this is all the tubes that we used. You can put in a name, a weight per inch, a wall thickness, a size of the tube. You can do square tube, um, rectangular tube, all kinds of different stuff. But here's our one inch, you know, here's what it weighed. Here's the color. I made the colors so they would match the tubes in our 25.6 spec sheet. Um, as you can see, this one inch tube is 0.058 wall thickness. Here's our inch of five eighths tube, the red tube, which is the majority of our cage. You can kind of insert everything exactly how you want it for your project. Um, if we go up to tubes, there's the die library, and as you can see here, we have our die for our bender. Um, where everything is, if you see the bend location offset, basically I made a part, bent it, and saw how far off it was, made another one, and as you can see here, it was an eighth of an inch off um, from where I was marking the pipe to where I needed it in the bender, so I made it to where it was comfortable for me to use. So there's a lot of different tools like that. If you had um, a bender that was an automated bender, you make a couple bends and figure out your spring back. And what your spring back is, is how far you have to bend it in order to get the, the bend you want. With ours, it's manual. So pretty much once I take the pressure off, it would spring back to um, where, where it was going to end up. And then we'd just bend it that way. So as you can see, I have all of our parts here. I have all different kinds of names. If we go to cutting, here's all of our different cuts. Um, here's our windshield support bar. Here is the tube, uh, tube wrapper that you make in order to make all your cuts. So you put this on the tube, you measure from the end of the tube, you measure from one wrapper to the next, put them on the tube, line them up, cut them out and everything fits pretty good. As long as all your measurements are right and you're consistent, everything will work out just fine. Um, so like I said, this is a very easy to use software. Um, it can be confusing at times. Some of the bends and stuff take a little time to figure out, um, but it is fantastic. I, I don't know what I would have done without this. It probably would have taken me a whole lot longer, but as you can see, there is pretty much our whole cage right there. And then if we go to details, right here we can see the total weight of our assembly is 192 pounds. So we have just under 200 pounds in the cage. Um, there's a couple tubes, like I said, that aren't on here. But that being said, 200 pounds to me for the safety factor is not much. We just have to figure out where to cut it, cut that weight uh, elsewhere. But like I said, guys, this is a fantastic software. It's, it's not the cheapest thing in the world, but it's well worth the money if you're going to do something like this. A cage like this to have built is not cheap. So if you can do this on your own and learn, um, I learned a fantastic amount through this whole process, and I am so glad that I went through with it. But yeah, so that is our cage. That's kind of how everything works. And this is the Bentec software. So guys, that's kind of a rough overview of kind of how we went about the cage. Like I said, there's a lot of thought involved. Um, you got to do a lot of planning, a lot of forethought, all of that. I'm sure we will use a lot of these skills later. Um, the Furek Cups, fantastic. They made um, welding, TIG welding this 
so much easier. Also, that Bentec software is probably the one tool we couldn't have done this without. Um, I've never done tube work before like this, and it just made things simple. Like I said, those uh, cut wrappers for your tubing, the bend diagrams, the little video to show you exactly how to bend it. You know, um, I think the example I used was the main hoop. That's kind of easy because you keep the thing flat. Um, but if you had something like, well, something like this bar here of our funny car cage where you, got, you have to turn it at one point between the bends, um, it shows you how to do that, which way to turn it in your bender, all that kind of good stuff. Um, like I said, fantastic. If it's something you're interested in, I'm no expert. I know how to pretty much do what we've done, and that's about it. But definitely check out some YouTube videos. Check out all the information on the Bentec stuff. Like I said, uh, with the wiki uh, page they have and YouTube videos, I was pretty much able to figure out everything we needed. Um, there's certainly a lot of trial and error, but you can go back, erase parts, redo them, um, and just come back and kind of figure out how you want the cage to be without burning through any tube, which we got all our tube from s and race cars. For the most part, we did grab a piece off of MD Diesel Fab on the Instagram. Um, check him out. He's a local guy who is fabricating cages and his work, well, it speaks for itself. It looks great and big shout out to him. I appreciate the help on that tube. Um, but anyhow, guys, we got all our tube from s and and we did all the work here in-house. I'm very proud of the cage. Um, I think it looks fantastic. Yes, there are some things that are not perfect that you would, you know, if you were paying somebody to do it, you'd say, you know, hey, can we change this up a little bit? But I'm happy with it. For me being an amateur and never doing something like this before, I'm extremely happy with it. That being said, one of the questions I get down in the comments quite often since we started doing this, was it worth it? Was it worth doing this cage by myself in the garage? Absolutely. Um, it took way more time and way more effort than I ever anticipated. I knew it was gonna be a lot, I just didn't realize this much. Um, that being said, I learned a ton. Um, the amount I learned with cutting the tube, chamfering the tube, fitting the tube, all that kind of stuff, that's invaluable. Um, that's stuff that I will never lo lose. It's stuff I will be able to use going forward on the truck, on different stuff like that. And I'm just, I'm so glad that I went through with it that I'm, I'm just, I'm 100% happy that I did this on my own. That being said, well, we have about $1,500 worth of chromoly into the cage. So with the amount of TIG welding involved, you guys can kind of figure out this is a very expensive cage to have built by a shop. Um, so we also saved a little coin in the meantime, but we were waiting on the engine. We are waiting on all, all kinds of stuff. But that means it's time to start getting this truck back together. It's start, time to start making this thing into a truck, get our new Freedom Racing Engines, Freedom Racing Engines engine into it, get you know the doors on, get the steering wheel in. Yes, we still have to mount our Kirky and our seat, or our, uh, harness mount but that's all stuff we can do from here forward we're going to be able to make progress we're going to be able to see that progress and this thing should be looking like a truck and hopefully we can get this thing to the track and have a couple months to play i know the summer is going to be about over by the time we get done with this racing season is going to be about done but it is what it is i'm happy i did it and uh i'm not saying i will build a cage like this ever again uh, but I'm very happy that I now have the knowledge and the abilities that I developed through this whole process. So anyway, guys, I know that was a bit of a lengthy um, kind of ramble on about the cage and how we built the cage. But going forward, it's going to be nuts and bolts. We're going to pull this stock engine out, uh, get our Freedom Racing engines engine in. That's kind of weird to say. Um, and just get this thing moving under tone power and get it back to the track. So anyway, guys, I hope you enjoyed. Um, if you have questions, please comment down below. Let me know what you guys think of the cage. Think of uh, you know what stuff I used, what you probably would have used you know, also to help. Um, just comment down below what you think. So anyway, guys, get out in your garage, get the wrenching on your truck.